One of the biggest problems and questions I think we all face on the programming side is how does sales work? Like, how does the sales department sell? Why am I not getting my endorsements? And what can I do to help? So yeah, I could have just gone down the hall and asked, but I did one thing better. I actually reached out to my boss, uh, Kim Martinez, who is the SVP market manager here in Portland and decided to pick her brain about all these things. So I asked her to explain what we can do on the talent side to help sales and how sales even works from the start to finish. And why is digital so hard to sell? All those questions and more this week on How to Radio. First, let's start with your history. Like, how did you get it to be the market manager at Intercom Portland? Sure, yeah. Um, so I started in radio in college. So as a DJ on a college radio station, um, I did Thursday night a punk show and a Sunday R&B show. And then they were going to close down the radio station um, and they needed a GM to keep it open. So I'm like, I'll apply. And somehow they gave me the role. And next thing you know, um, I had 80 student DJs um, and this little cable run radio station. And that's when I really fell in love with radio. Um, and then uh, I had, and I had a, a, a job on Saturday mornings after a collectibles show and Art Bell uh, doing news at 5 a.m. on Saturdays uh, at a little talk station in Chico. And then after I graduated, I, um, I moved to Seattle and I wanted to get back into radio. I loved the programming side of it. No one would hire me, but they said they had a sales assistant position open. So I went for it. So I started answering phones uh, and then I worked my way up to seller and then worked my way up to general sales manager. And then I uh, worked for corporate for about five years. Uh, I started our digital company. At that time, it was called Smart Reach Digital, now Intercom Digital. And I went to all our markets and did training around um, that department. And then about a year and a half ago, I was asked to run Portland. So I was the market manager for Portland for about a year and a half now. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why. You never think that management has to work their way up through radio like, you know, like the talent does. But it's nice to see that you've done all the jobs and now are, you know, the boss. Well, and it gives you perspective, I think, too. You know, I mean, it's hard to run radio stations if you don't have a real understanding of what everyone does. Since sales and um, program are usually divided, can you walk us through the process of how sales works, like from start to finish? It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, it is hard, it's, and it's harder now. You know, back in the day, like when I started, it was you know newspaper, TV, radio. But now advertisers have a million different options, and it's hard to even get your foot in the door. So really, it starts with doing some really good prospecting. So you know, what type of businesses make sense uh, to call on, and doing some research beforehand. And then you've got to create a really good BBR, valid business reason, because you only have a short, short period of time to get their attention to get the first appointment. Um, typically, I like to do something super specific. So like, for example, if you were calling on a plumber, um, you know, hey, Mr. Plumber, you know, we work with plumbers all across the country. In fact, one, we're delivering over 1,200 leads a month for them. Not sure if it would work for you. Not sure if you even want leads. Uh, but if you do, we'd love 20 minutes or just an opportunity to understand a little bit more about your, what you're trying to do with your marketing and see if we can help. So something super specific and to the point. It's rare you get that appointment on the first dial, um, but you know to have that persistency and tenacity to keep calling to get that first meeting. So once you do get that first meeting, you celebrate, <laughs> and then you go in, and the whole goal of that first meeting is really to just listen and uncover a marketing challenge that, um, that we can solve. So it's not about pitching our stations, it's not about selling anything, it's really about listening. And the really good sellers get it, but it's, as you can imagine, hard for most sellers to shut up and listen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the goal of that first meeting is really to uncover a marketing challenge um, and walk away with a homework assignment and the next meeting. So from there, you come back and then work with your sales managers, with your programming department, and come up with solutions or an integrated marketing uh, plan to help solve that problem you identified in that first meeting. So then you go back and present, and then there's probably three or four more meetings where you negotiate to the end, and then it gets to the close. Okay. So it is, if you're doing it right, um, a little bit of a longer sales process, but it all starts with really good prospecting, finding and uncovering a marketing challenge, and coming back with a solution. You know, nowadays more than ever, it's ideas that sell, and it's that ROI that's so critical. 
We always hear that uh, digital is like the next big thing uh, to sell, but it seems to never get sold. So what do you think uh, the problem is that, that sales is facing? So I think for digital, it's just there's so much competition out there. Um, and I think most um, companies have been burned with digital. So there's a little level of trust that needs to be built when selling digital solutions. Um, also, there's so many of them between OTT and digital audio and search and social. That I think it could be really overwhelming. You know, Entercom, uh, we do offer pretty much any online marketing solution you would need. Um, so, so there's a couple challenges with that. One, you know, how do we train our salespeople to think above and beyond just radio and get them, give them the confidence they need to sell digital? And then two, how do we get that opportunity to get in front of our advertisers uh, to not only pitch our digital solutions, but actually um, get the opportunity to get those uh, digital dollars? In Portland in particular, I think, you know, it's, it's a smaller market and there's a, a few players and we came a little bit late to the table so now we're like kind of in a an approve our asset um, situation but you know coming from the digital side um, you know I mean, I'm full confidence in all our products and services that we can offer it's just um, getting the opportunity to do so do you think more companies are leaning on digital now especially like during COVID I don't think COVID really has anything to do with it I think um, digital I think Businesses went to digital because there was attribution, right? You could see how digital was working. And that was our biggest challenge in radio for so long is that, um, I mean, we all know radio works, but we couldn't prove it. Mm -hmm. You know, now we have, you know, analytics and platforms um, that in ways we could show advertisers how radio works. So that in conjunction with digital um, um, make, makes it easier for advertisers to show uh, attribution to the, the solutions that we're providing them. So I don't think it's a COVID thing. I think it was just exciting for a moment in time that advertisers could see the results immediately from their digital campaigns. Okay. Now radio can do the same thing. Um, so it's just really, again, going back to uncovering a marketing challenge, bringing an integrated solution, and then um, and holding retention with those advertisers. Are the selling issues uh, any way related to the sellers not being trained? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, um, I th the one thing COVID has done is um, force us to change the way we do things. You know, I think there were, there were our good sellers were already changing and adapting and evolving pre-COVID, um, but now it's really forced us to look at things differently. So, so yes, I think there's an element of most people don't like change. Most people don't like to learn something new. Most people don't understand digital, uh, especially you know radio salespeople. But the people that um, are curious and want to learn and want to grow are the people that are going to be doing this for a long time and the people that are going to be bringing really great smart solutions to their advertisers. Is there as much money in selling digital as there is like selling on air and that may be why they're not interested? Uh, no, uh, there's if you look at the marketing pie, more dollars go to digital than they do to radio. Okay. Period. There's more uh, ad dollars being spent in digital every day than there is radio. I think it's just, um, there's a little bit of a comfort level, you know? I mean, most of our radio sellers have been selling radio for a really long time. Okay. Um, but I will say that it's changing, you know, with radio.com, our digital audio platform, and our digital solutions, you know, sellers are getting it now. Um, they're talking to business owners, they're, they're talking to our advertisers, and all their advertisers are doing digital. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they want to be a part of that. And so, um, so it's exciting to see the progress from the last, not only the last 18 months, but the last, you know, five years and to get into that space. Obviously as talent, we think endorsements are special, but I don't know if it works that way on the sales side. So what are your thoughts on endorsements and how do you think we can get more of them? Endorsements are I believe one of our most effective assets. I mean, you guys are the influencers. Um, you know, you have the ears of our listeners. You have the credibility. Um, you know, our listeners listen to you every day. Um, and so I think what's helpful for salespeople is that they get to know you. You know, they learn, you know, what you're interested in, what you need, what you're passionate about. And when they do that, it opens up new categories and new prospects that they might not have ever thought of. And then the other part of it is if they can bring you on a sales call. I mean, so I think sometimes we forget the celebrity that you guys bring to the table. But if they can bring you into a sales call, um, I think it just takes the, the sales portion away of it um, and just brings in a, a lean in moment, an excited moment, it brings the sexy back to radio. And then again, you know, having you endorse a product, it just works because of that relationship and credibility you have with our audiences. 
all right, now that I'm an expert on sales, <laughs> uh, what can we as talent do to help sell? You know, I think communication and collaboration. I mean, I love how we're having these brand meetings now, um, you know, where, you know, sales and programming come together. Um, you know, ideas sell. Um, ideas are points of differentiation. Um, they're ways to get in front of advertisers. So I think the more communication and collaboration we have, the better. Um, and just getting to know each other. You know, I think for a long time it's programming and sales. But I think, you know, when you can create a culture of collaboration, I, that's going to be better for, for everyone. And I love that you're actually asking these questions because I think talent probably doesn't understand the day-to-day -day that is sales. Oh, yeah, I can, I can totally agree with that, which actually brings up the next point. So we talk a lot of smack on the programming side about the sales department, and I imagine that it's also, you know, reciprocated, um, mainly because we feel like you guys don't understand us or know anything about us or know our shows. Every time I think a salesperson comes up to a jock and is like, what time's that segment on that you've been doing for 10 years? I think we die a little bit inside. Uh, so what's the equivalent on the sales side? Like, what's your biggest issue uh, with the programming department? Oh, gosh, that is like such a great question. And it's just hilarious, too. Um, look, and this is a stereotype and a broad brushstroke, <laughs> but most salespeople are, are uh, impatient. <laughs> They're not great listeners and they need something like right now. Right. Yeah. So uh, I think just understanding uh, the dynamic and that, that personality uh, type um, helps. Um, you know, and, and talent's the opposite, you know, so it's, it's, it's just, it's just, uh, I think, um, again, I think it just comes down to communication and, and managing expectations, but the more they know you, um, you know, the more they can take you on sales calls, um, the more you're involved in the overall process, the better spec spots. I'm in love with that. You guys do such a great job with, with spec spots. I mean, that helps sales people every day. In fact, um, Kristen just did one for me last week and we sold it. No, um, sure. Yeah, it was awesome. So, you know, um, helping salespeople in, in that sense. And, and that's that's another thing that's changed in our medium, right? So it's not just over the air anymore. I mean, you reach and touch our listeners in so many different ways. I mean, through Alexa, through social channels, through, I mean, like there's so many different ways that you're engaging with our audiences. And so we need to take advantage of, of all those platforms, not you know, not just over the air. Well, Kim, thank you again for doing this. I appreciate it. I think that, you know, programming and sales department need to come together a little bit more uh, to help sell more radio. Uh, can you leave us with your final thoughts on what we can all kind of do to make sure that radio gets sold? One thing talent should know right now is that for salespeople, it's hard right now. It, 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 it's hard, yeah. you know, so again, having kind of that patience and understanding um, as we move forward, I think is super helpful too.